What's up, everybody? I hope we're doing well today. Today, we're going to be talking about the topic of abstract art. First of all, I would like to start out by saying that the abstract art industry is a scam. Since it is extremely likely that most of us in this classroom loves money, I want every one of you guys in this room to know that it is not that hard to make an abstract art that is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions if you have the right type of influences and the right type of people around you. You could easily make a, a abstract art that is worth $100,000 or even simply $10,000. And this video is going to teach you what kind of artworks and what kind of artists have made that money and how you could do the same and make millions too. The first topic for my loom review was why is abstract art so expensive? My first source was a research paper about the collage paintings of Jither Irwins named Size Matters, which is written by an art journalist for British art journal, Peter Jones. While Peter was describing Irwin's artworks, he had said, Irwin's collages, which included recovered sections of old poster, are particularly opposite. Their weathering and la layering evoke a temporal quality, a melanonic aesthetic of decay and connotations of archaeological fragments that were an analogous with abstract art. The artist Irwin Instead of following the normal and trending and expected, he had come up with the brilliant idea of having the artwork about the controversy of the problems in the art community. Many of his artworks were denied and rejected at first in, at the art community in that era because the general public had said that his artwork were too abstract, weird materials, and messy, but all his messages in the painting had paid off in the end because all the negativity that he had received in the in that era made his artwork worth millions of dollars today. The second source that I had for my first topic was a book named Beyond Resemblance by Robert Lindsay. When Lindsay was talking about certain artworks from an abstract artist named Morris Lewis, who makes extreme complex related artworks between color, surface, viscosity edges, shapes, and all the materials properties of paint. She had said that what makes his artwork abstract and expensive is the connection between story and image, between text and object, between title and work. In other words, many of the abstract artworks need to have stories or meanings behind the paintings in order to put a certain value on the paintings that they had made. Even the title that the artist gives to the artwork need to have concise explanation behind them all. The fact that the artist had made the artworks in order to spread awareness about an issue or make a statement makes the artwork worth it to be celebrated and thought to be auctioned upon. My second topic was about how does abstract art provoke emotions? Emotions are the feelings we have like happiness, sadness, scared, angry, annoyed, and they are the most pivotal parts of humans that makes us human. It is how we connect with others and how we build a relationship. The first source of my second topic is a research paper named Color Emotion Association Study on Abstract Art Paintings by Hibatula Liu Zhou who are well-known lecturers and professors and also experts in this type of experiment and have good experience reporting and conducting studies. study was based on the idea on whether abstract art does really provoke emotions onto the viewer just by looking at an artwork. The authors had con concluded this experiment by stating that the results indicated that there was a highly significant association between the type of emotions that certain colors evoked and our findings are in general consistent with the previous color psychology studies. The others were talking about how after all of the different parts of the experiments that they had done, they had came to a conclusion of the fact that the emotions can be manipulated by the colors on the artwork. For example, the study also confirmed that yellow can bring out amusement feelings, cane brings out the feelings of contentment, blue brings out the feelings of disgust, and black brings out the feelings of fear, and white can provoke sad feelings. Because of the fact that abstract art usually contains contextual information and usually rely on the colors and shapes and textures of the paintings in order to relay their message or statement, 
This study goes out there to manifest the statement that abstract art does provoke emotions by the colors portrayed in the artwork. It's called The Colors of Paintings and Viewers' Preferences by Nascimento. It was an experiment in which the Patreons were presented with a range of abstract art paintings in which they rotated angles of the paintings to see whether the angle of the painting affect how much a Patreon like a painting and different colored abstract paintings to see if specific color range paintings will be more preferred than the other. The authors had also stated that the problem with recent researches on color theory affecting emotion is that they tend to focus towards only one color, which is usually not the case in the real artwork because most of the abstract art paintings are filled with a range of different types of colors. But in conclusion, the author had stated that multicolored paintings are generally perceived by humanism similar to the ways they perceive single colors and two colors. Basically, the author had found no difference on how we perceive art and that there is no difference on the way we perceive one or multicolors. Overall, our emotions are definitely being manipulated by the colors of the abstract art. Another interesting thing that I had found in this specific source was the fact that different types of people with different types of background can have different perspective on abstract artwork. For example, if you come from a poor neighborhood, you would have a different perspective uh, of an artwork compared to a person who comes from a rich neighborhood. My third topic evolved around the question of how does an artist make an abstract artwork. My first source of my third topic is a research article named A Hydrodynamic Instability is Used to Create an Aesthetically Appealing Patterns in Painting by Sandra Zatina. The article was about the use of physics equations in order to make highly sophisticated pattern paintings. While the author was explaining the method that he has used in order to paint the paintings, he said, The paint had spread approximately 20 cm in diameter. A smaller volume, 30 ml, was poured and the paint had spread it to 10 cm. The artist was using specific mathematical measures in order to make the painting. He had continued by talking about how he had came upon the equation of AT equal parenthesis P2 minus P1 parenthesis divided by parenthesis P2 plus P1 parenthesis equal to 0 0.05. Everything from the strokes to every circles and blobs in the artwork were all specifically determined and planned out. Because of the specific materials and methods that were used for this painting, it had made the value of the paintings way more than what it normally would be. And the fact that this is not a common painting and that rarely people ever do this had also played a major role into determining the value of the artwork. My second source of my third topic was a documentary film named Fritz Winter Composition in Blue by Green J. Morris. While the artist was talking about all the social norms that there were in that specific era that he was in, he had said that many of the artists had used traditional paintings, supplies like pastel, watercolor, acrylics, in order to make their painting. And he had the idea in his head that it, the only way to succeed in that era was to be unique and make the viewers want to look again and again. Fritz Winter had made his paintings with extreme care and counted every stroke he took, and he had put paint on plastic and carefully put that paint on the paintings to make it exquisite and unique patterns. Even though it might not have looked too unique in this era, it was a breakthrough in that era and, and it was something that someone has never tried before, which had led his paintings to be worth a lot more and meaningful too. Many of my sources had included a variety of books, articles by a variety of authors, artists, and even art critics. They all had a career or work under the topic of arts, therefore they tended to have the answers that had favored the subject of arts and focused around the good sides of it. So I had made an interview with questions, which questions the answer that I got from my sources to finally get a definite answer to answer or deny findings from my sources and to see if both the findings match up or not. I had expected to find out whether many of the abstract artists become successful to all depending on the process of the story the artist had taken in order to paint the paintings, the meanings behind their artworks and the different types of emotions the different types of artworks provoked and the size of the artwork and the reputation of the artist. 
I had interviewed two art museum conductors from two different museums who have had a good amount of experience, including the subject of abstract art and its relations, and asking them about their artworks in the museum. The art curator, Natalie Ruth Baumis, is the coordinator for of family and community programs in the Department of Learning and Engagement at the Denver Art Museum. Although she had not specifically worked with abstract art, she is surrounded by abstract art curators and all type of artists around her, and she has a very specific view on abstract art that makes her interesting incredible enough to be interviewed. And Emily Kowalski, who is registered at Clifford Still Art Museum, who also have an art degree in art and have been in the museum field for 25 years. I had also interviewed Bailey Sanchez, who is an associate curator, college managing and research and project manager, and she has also had an undergrad in art history, men master's in art history, degree in fine arts, and have worked in the museum for about 10 years. The interviews that I had was somewhat agreeing and disagreeing with me at the same time for my late review. Although the interview didn't agree with me on the fact that colors have that big of an impact when there are multiple other factors that consider the values of the artwork, even though there are studies that prove that colors provoke emotions in people, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to impact the painting's value and there are more important matters other than just colors. The huge parts of this interview that was major disagreement on was the size of the artwork, determining the value of the artwork. All my interviewees were also arguing strongly on the idea that the bigger the size of the artwork does not mean that the amount of the price of the artwork is going to be big too. The main part that we agreed on was the reputation of the artist. Reputation does have a definite impact on the value of the artwork. If the artists have and respected reputation in their artwork, that means that the person's artwork is going to be highly sought after by collectors and museums and the demand is high, which means the supply is low. For example, Clifford Still's artworks are considered extremely valuable because they really go on the market. The big main flaw in this interview was though that the interview tended to focus on old works and all its history, but I was trying to figure out the new era. And I didn't get as much detailed information about how our current art abstract artworks get big too, because all the new artists won't have the type of reputation that artists like Still had. All the different sources for my lit review had given me an idea of what the answers to my lit review might be. And the interviews for my field research had given me concise answers and real evidence into answering my question. My lit review had given me ideas that colors can have really big effects on the artwork and the meanings behind the artwork can really define whether the value of the artwork will go up or down. But my interview has shown me that colors don't really have that much of an impact on the value of the artwork. It's mainly based on the reputation. Although the lit review had made me think that the size of the artwork really do matter on determining the value of the artwork, the field research report had assured me that the size of the artwork had no part in determining the value of the artwork. The Lit Review has also talked about how the process of how an artwork is made plays a definite role in determining the value or the amount of the artwork. I had concluded from this whole investigation that it is going to be extremely hard for new artists to pop off as an artist and really make artworks that are going to be worth even a thousand dollars if you don't have the type of reputation that you need to have to make successful artworks. And even if you know how to make the prettiest artwork possible, Without the right people around you that have the connections to sell your art and make your art more seen, it wouldn't matter how pretty it is, it'll just be a pretty artwork. For my future research, I am planning to make my own abstract artworks and show them to the art curators that I had talked to and interviewed with and see what kind of opinions that they have about it, what would they change and would they ever Put it in a museum. And when I go to art school, I want to talk about the factors that I had learned from my whole report and talk to my art teachers and see what they think and what their views on my um, report. And in conclusion, next time you go to an art museum, I want you to truly think about what happened behind the artwork? What is the process that went through this and into the making of this artwork? What, who is the artist and what has he done in order to get that type of reputation that to have his artwork put up in a museum? Instead of just blankly looking at the artwork and thinking, oh, I could have done it like every other person that goes into the museum. Be smart, think smart.